Hey guys, Barney Boy TV here again with the Lithio GBA Round 2 Precap. In our first matchup, we have the Pori Arc 9s versus the Toronto Tranchums. The Arc 9s managed a 2 0 win over the Tranchums. Uh, nuclear Android just did his homework. He brought Mandibuzz and Florges like he usually does. It's a great two wall system. Uh, Mega Mandacham's also a great hitter. Suicune's a great wall. Dragonite obviously hits hard. And Kevangelo is there with sticky web support. And he also hits pretty hard if you let him. Uh, John had a pretty good team. He got unlucky in a couple parts, but I'd say the Nuclear deserved the win all in all. In our next match, we've got the Portland Timbers versus Action Wand. The Timbers managed a 2 0 win. Uh, as you can see, it was a pretty solid team effort from the Timbers. Almost everyone got a kill, and uh, Quagsire, the only member that didn't get a kill, didn't even die. So, uh, it was good game planning by the Timbers, and uh, Action Wand battled well, but they just didn't battle well enough to get the win. Uh, in our next match, we have the Amphabios versus the DC Glaceons. The Glaceons got a 3 0 victory by way of forfeit. Uh, the Amphabios broke the uh, item clause again, and it happens, but uh, we have a very strict two recovery item max per battle item clause and uh, he just broke it so I had to give the DC Glaceons the win. Our next match is Surrey Litleo versus the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Litleo managed a 1-0 win and this battle was outstanding. Love to watch these two battle Matt and uh, Bogut they're just both great battlers and they both do their homework and they both understand how the GBA works well and they understand how to game plan for each battle. Uh, Matt brought the Sand Rush Excadrill, which got set up by the Mega Tyranitar, so that was one of the greatest key factors in the game. And uh, the, I'd say the turning point in the game was there was no sand, and Excadrill stayed in against Darmanitan as Darmanitan went for a U-turn, and from there Excadrill was able to get another kill, and it actually ended up winning the game for the Lutleo, as far as I can see. But altogether, it was a great battle. Uh, in our next match, we have the San Antonio Shinx versus the Boston Red Sox. The Shinx picked up the first 6-0 of the season. Uh, Gastrodon just was able to come in, he set up some stockpiles, and the Red Sox just weren't able to counter him after that. It was a pretty good game plan by uh, Chris as he came in, but Matt or MJ Wapel just has to come in with a better strategy next time. He didn't bring anything really to counter the Gastrodon, and I think that maybe a Mega Alakazam, I don't know if he was carrying the energy ball on it, since Alakazam didn't live long enough for us to see that, but I think that he just needed to do some more homework, and I think next time he'll come out stronger. In our next battle, we have the New Orleans Chuckles versus the Tennessee Rachus, and the Chuckles ended up winning 2 nothing. This is another outstanding battle. The key turn point in the game was when Ditto was brought in and transformed into Mega Pinsir, but he didn't have full happiness on his Ditto, so his returns didn't do nearly as much damage as they should have, and that actually ended up uh, being the key factor as to why the Chuckles won this game. In our next battle, we've got the Detroit Pinsers versus the Florida for Alligators, and the Pinsers managed to win 3 0. It was just a Mega Mall Wild Show. After he set up a substitute, uh, the Frelligators weren't able to break him down, and Zumo and Typhlosion did their part with getting uh, two kills and one kills respectively, but it was just too much for the Frelligators to bear. He didn't see the substitute coming from Azumaro when he went for a, a uh, will o with Dusclops, and from there on it was just a struggle for them. The St. Louis Rampardos versus the Baltimore Bishops is our next matchup, and the Rampardos managed a 3-0 win. Porygon Z came through and he was just able to get those cleanup kills like uh, Oregon C usually does in Wi-Fi battles and uh, Infernape managed two kills, Gliscor managed one, Cloister and Reuniclus didn't even see the field I don't believe but uh, the Rampardos just came in with a better strategy in my opinion they were able to break down the Baltimore Bishops and they just won the game. Uh, Riley tried to set up with his Mew and Mew got toxic and he was setting a bunch of calm mines and he didn't carry Baton Bass I don't believe so he just wasted his plus five, plus five Mew. I think that's what it was at when it finally died to the Gliscor. But altogether, it was a pretty solid match. Our next match is between the New Orleans Chuckles and the Toronto Strangems. And uh, this is just a makeup match from round one. Uh, both people had a hard time with scheduling and stuff, so they were able to make it up. And the Tranchum ran him a 2 0 win. Mega Metric just did a lot of work to his team, and Halucha actually did too. Once he gets that. Uh, on Burden Boost, he's a great threat, and it was just a really good battle, really fun battle to watch. Both teams clearly showed that they did their homework and that they are very good battlers, obviously, but uh, the Transform was just able to pull it out. Uh, in our next battle, it's actually another makeup match, and this one's between the St. Louis Rampardos and Axie Milan, and Axie Milan's able to win 3 0. Uh, Scarf Toxic Croak was the main winner, or main comp winning component of this one for Axie Milan. Corey with a great strategy there, many people wouldn't see that coming, in my opinion. Uh, this battle is actually uploaded to the Lithio GBA uh, YouTube page, so you can watch it there if you'd like to. Uh, Porygon Z and Infernape and Cloyster all had their fair share of kills, but in the end, uh, the Scarf Toxic Croak was really just the key component for Core's winning. 
Here we can see the league standings. Uh, the Portland Timbers, Puerto Canastri, Litleo all remain undefeated as the San Antonio Shinx, Cleveland Cavaliers, XU Milan, St. Louis Ramparos, DC Glaceons, Toronto Tarantons, Florida Fire Alligators, New Orleans Chuckles, Tennessee Rechus, Detroit Panthers, all are one and one. So this is still obviously wide open. It's only after two rounds, so you'd fully expect that. Uh, and the Baltimore Bay Sharps, the Fabios, and the Boston Red Sox need to pick up their game a little bit if they are trying to make the playoffs. Top eight make the playoffs, which is why the left section on which is blue and highlighted. But season's still very wide open since we're only through two weeks. Uh, here we have the MVP race with Breloom with 17 points, Alakazam and Gastrodon both are tied with 14 points, Weavile with 13, and we've got four Pokemon tied with 11 points, and those are Mega Charizard Y, Mega Magic, uh, Talonflame, and Porygon Z. Uh, and here are the round three matchups. We've got the Detroit Plancers versus the Amphavios, the DC Glaceons versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Florida for Alligators versus the XU Milan, the Surrey Litleo versus the Boston Red Sox, uh, the Portland Timbers versus Baltimore Bisharps, the San Antonio Shanks versus Toronto Tarantrums, the St. Louis Rampardos versus New Orleans Chuckles and the Poor Yarkonines versus Tennessee Red Shoes. Uh, the two matchups that catch my my, my eye in the uh, round three matchups is Florida for Alligators versus Action Milan. Those two, both one on one going into the match, it should be a pretty good battle. They battle all the time since they're brothers, so it should be fun to watch. And then uh, the best matchup for this week, in my opinion, by far, is the Poor Yarkonines and Tennessee Red Shoes. Nuclear Android, he has already shown that he's a great battler in this league. He's 2-0, he's coming in, he wants to win, and he knows how to win. He's got a great team, he's got a great strategy. Uh, the Tennessee Raichus, their coach, Shadow Chu, or Raheem, he's a, also an outstanding battler. He had a tough loss with uh, Ditto not having full happiness. I think he probably could have won that one if his Ditto had full happiness, but either way, that should be an outstanding battle, and I can't wait to watch it.